And if you want to go ahead and start it off, I will start seeing if I can share those files in here. Perfect. Okay, so today we're going to talk about more about shifting from the fixed mindset, like we talked about last week, to a growth mindset. Um, I'm going to discuss five different ways. Um, obviously, it's not always possible to apply a growth mindset because things, bad things are going to happen. Um, sad things are going to happen. Stressful events are going to happen. Um, when we face challenges, we get defensive because our insecurities flare, whether we have anxiety, whether we've had um, something traumatic happen as a child and then something triggers that as an adult. Um, triggers can activate us to be and stay in that fixed mindset. We kind of touched on that last week, um, but we have to learn how to identify those triggers and handle them before, during, and after whatever that event is that happens. Um, that's how we switch our thinking and shift from doubts to growth, um, from worrying to taking interest in the actual process. That's something that I love. I love the process. I love the journey. Not everybody's like that. I know I'm a freak, but that's just, that's part of growing up. That's part of having a maturity is you have to learn to trust the process and love the process because if you don't you're always going to be stuck um, you also have to take responsibility sometimes it's not always your fault but taking responsibility for what's happening to you and learning how to move forward um, I think we're just gonna she's gonna try to send you these worksheets um, and you can work on them at home we'll talk about those next week um, the first way that we can shift our mindset is to tell yourself a different story so there's power, obviously, in what we tell ourselves, what we think of ourselves. Our actions are nothing but a manifestation of our beliefs. We must learn to catch ourselves in the moment and make a choice to shift the language of our story. So, for example, um, saying I'm not good at something. Why can't we switch that and say I can do better at this thing? Um, we hear all the time, well, I'm, I'm not good at talking. I can't do Zooms. I'm not, I'm not good at speaking in front of people. Okay, why don't we switch that and say, I can do better and I can learn how, to, what skills can I pick up? Can I talk in front of a mirror? Can I do maybe a private one-on-one? -on -one? I'm really, I have my own Zoom number. Um, when you create an account, you get, you can do it yourself. Um, I get on there and talk to myself. I know that sounds really weird, but in the beginning I did that. I would get on and talk to myself until I was comfortable um, doing the Zooms one-on-one -on -one if you get a new teammate or even a new customer. Talking face-to-face -face a lot of times helps. Um, I can't do something. I can do something. I give up and it's beyond me. Switch that to I believe in myself. There's going to be limitations. There's going to be talents that maybe you weren't born with, but you can believe in yourself enough to learn and do better. Did you want to add anything, Courtney? She's working on these worksheets. Okay. Number two is set learning goals instead of performance goals. This is going to be really key for us because we like to set really big goals and there's nothing wrong with that. But um, focus on the process as opposed to the outcome. So many of us chase that outcome rather than the actual process to the outcome. So then when that outcome doesn't meet our expectations, we're just like, I'm not doing it anymore. Um, you really have to focus on what did you learn through that process? What did you gain through that process? Um, and then what can I fix to get, make it even better to get that outcome I was shooting for in the first place? So for example, um, weight loss, instead of saying, I'm, I want to lose 30 pounds. What do we do? Okay. Uh, what do we do in order to lose those 30 pounds? Um, we commit to healthy eating. We commit to exercise, taking better care of ourselves, um, going outside for a walk instead of sitting on the sofa, maybe taking the stairs rather than the elevator. Shift, by shifting to learning, we can consciously choose a path in which hard work and effort and practice per and persistence will be the keys to success. Success equals years of hard work in which learning never needs. Okay, I'll stop and let you go over your 27 things. So it's finally letting me send them. I'll send the other one when I'm done. But um, all right, let me go. Sorry, I updated my computer and it's like, it's like taking forever. And I'm like, come on. Um, where the heck is it now? There we go. Okay. All right. So there's a list over here and it kind of talks about, or excuse me, 20, 25, not 27, but 25 ways to overcome 
um, having that negative mindset, challenging those negative thoughts, um, or we, I call, you know, they're called also thought distortions, but how to develop a growth mindset. And uh, some of them, uh, Chris already touched on, but one is acknowledge and embrace your imperfections instead of fighting them or changing them. Don't hide your weaknesses because it means you'll never overcome them. Don't stifle them down. Don't dwell on them. Um, acknowledge and embrace your imperfections. Uh, number two is view challenges as opportunities. Instead of looking at a challenge and automatically feeling defeated, automatically feeling like you cannot change it, you cannot influence it, um, you cannot overcome it, um, look at it as a new opportunity. It's, so, it's a new opportunity to learn something. It's an opportunity to understand a different concept. It's an opportunity to grow, right? Um, number three is try learning different tactics. Um, stop, stop applying the same skills to different problems, okay? Um, when I did a lot of uh, mental health work with youth, we used a program called Social Thinking. And it was called Superflex. And what it does is it personifies these feelings through like superheroes and villains. And the superhero is called Superflex because he practices super flexible thinking. And then they also have these other villains like Rock, Brain, Glass, Man, Mean Gene. And each of them have, each of them represent a different thought distortion. Um, and so when it's, you know, learning different tricks is rock brain. Don't be rock brain. Don't be stuck on one thing over and over and over again. Don't get stuck there and apply and get frustrated and downtrodden or angry because the problem isn't being solved because you're applying the same solutions to a different problem. So being open to trying new things and learning different tactics, okay? Oops, sorry, see waiting room again. Okay, um, number four is follow the research on brain plasticity. What that means is like your brain is elastic. If it, if it expands and it's pulled back and it's stretched, it's going to come right back. Um, the brain is not fixed. The mind shouldn't be either. So what they mean is brain and mind, most people are like, that's the same thing. No, what they mean is the actual physical brain will change shape and form in different ways, but your mind, which is more of like the metaphysical part, right? Like the way you think about it that's also just as plastic and just as, or excuse me, elastic as the actual physical brain, the way that you're thinking, um, the way that you shape your thoughts, just because you've always done something one way, or you were raised a certain way, or you were taught something a certain way, or you have, you know, mental health issues, you know, all kinds of stuff. Your brain is elastic. Okay. You can control all of those things that are going on, how you think about things, what you default to. So understand that the brain is elastic, what right? What is what? I'm gonna mute people. All right. Um, number five is replace the word failing with learning. When you make a mistake or fall short of a goal, you haven't failed, you've learned. Instead of saying, I failed at this goal, you can say, I learned how not to reach that goal. Or I learned a lot of things along the way. I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about leadership. I learned a lot about what promos work and which ones don't. I learned a lot about what grows my audience, right? So it's not about what's failing. Replace the word failing with learning. Uh, number six is stop seeking approval. Seeking approval is a fixed mindset problem. Okay. If you were constantly seeking approval, you are prioritizing approval over learning. Um, and you end up sacrificing your own potential for growth because it is limited by what other people deem. Okay. Good, competent, successful, whatever. So you are relying on other people's opinions and standards to define your potential. And so it naturally and inherently sets limits. So stop seeking approval from other people. Okay. That is not having a growth mindset. Number seven is value the process over the end result. Okay. Understand that the process is just as important, if not more important than the end result, because you can achieve, okay, you can achieve um, double, triple, right? That just came out today. You can achieve double, triple, but what are you learning in the process? I know for me, when I was fixated on hitting double, triple, 
I was not understanding the process. And, and in that process, what I did learn is that I was turning all these customers into promoters just so they could get this deal. And then I was getting all this one-time growth and nothing was coming from it. Okay. So rather than focusing on the end result, rather than just trying to do whatever it takes to get rank advancement, if it means buying most of the volume or, you know, doing this double, triple and getting as many people on board as you can, it's about the process. It's about, are you getting, you know, good, adequate promoters that are duplicating? Are you getting volume that you were going to, you know, that you don't have to make up for again next month, you know? So understand that the process is just as valuable as the end result. Number eight, cultivate a sense of purpose, okay? Students with a growth mindset have a greater sense of purpose because they keep in mind the big picture. If you were on last night's Zoom about leadership and we were talking about tribal leadership and the different stages, this is huge. Cultivating a sense of purpose, the, the members of the tribe that buy into that and the tribes that cultivate that overall sense of purpose are more successful. So growth-minded people have a sense of purpose in what they are doing and why they are doing it. Fixed mindset people have no idea why they're doing it or they do it for very fleeting reasons. If they do it to, ident to, to find a, self, a sense of self-identification in it, that is a fixed mindset. If you feel like you need to hit 4K, 12K, 40K to be valued, to feel worthy, to do whatever, that is not cultivating a sense of purpose and that is having a fixed mindset. Um, number nine is authentically, okay, celebrating growth with others. If you truly appreciate growth, you will celebrate it wherever it comes, okay? Now, a lot of times they'll be like, yes, girl, but inside you're like, dude, F that person or screw them, like, blah, 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 you know, like whatever, right? That's not what I'm talking. I'm talking authentically being happy for them, not just saying, oh, congrats on doing that. Like, that must be nice. Or being like, yeah, I'm so happy for you, but inside you're internally screaming. That's not what this is about. Authentically celebrate growth because you value growth, whether it's in you or another person. Number 10 is emphasize growth over speed, okay? Growth mindset people, again, they value growth. So they will always prioritize growth over anything else. Speed or prestige is another one, okay? Are you growing or do you just want recognition? Are you just growing or do you just want someone to say, good job, and that's the only reason that you're growing or do you truly appreciate the process, okay? 11 is reward actions, not traits, okay? So for example, like telling people on your team when they're doing something, when they're doing something good or they're doing something smart or they're doing something successful, not just when they are successful, okay? This is something that we talk about a lot, which is recognizing people for their IPAs, their income producing activities. Hey, great job hopping on that Zoom. Hey, I see you busting ass doing RCMs. Hey, I see you doing X, Y, and Z. I see you doing that. Not just being like, congrats on 4K, congrats on VIP 800, right? Those are all great, but what they mean is reward actions. Reward people who are doing the do. And that means yourself too, okay? Don't just, don't just try to show up for a rank or a banner thinking that's the only time you're you know, you're going to feel worthy or receive praise. You need to value, again, the process, what got you there, the actions. Redefine genius, stop comparing yourself. Um, genius requires hard work, not talent. So if someone you feel like is a genius, it's just because they worked extra hard. Okay, so that means that anyone can do it. Anyone can get there. Genius is not like a trait that people are like necessarily born with and you're dumb and you'll never get to that level. That's not what it's about. So stop, stop looking at it like they're just smarter. They're just better. They just have more resources. They just this. All those things they have, you are able to get if you want it. If you have a growth mindset, people who have a growth mindset say, whatever they have, I can get that. Whatever smarts they have, whatever knowledge they have, I can get that. Okay. Uh, oh, Emil, uh, Elena, um, it is reward actions, not traits. Yeah, you had it right. It's Emily. I'm using my daughter's school computer, but reward. Okay. I was going to say Emily, but I was like, oh, wait a second. All right. Um, number 13 is per, uh, portray criticism as positive. Stop 
looking at criticism as negative. Stop taking it personally. Criticism is someone giving you feedback. Feedback informs, okay? Um, this is a lot of times when people get criticism, if they don't have a growth mindset, they take it to heart, they feel personally attacked as if it's somehow attacking their character, not their actions. If I say, hey, I definitely think part of the reason why you might not be growing is because you're not getting on a lot of Zooms. If a person who doesn't have a growth mindset hears that, they're going to say, she thinks I'm lazy. They feel like it's an attack on character as opposed to saying th the actual action, which is, yeah, I probably could be doing X more or Y more or something like that. Okay, I'll definitely try to improve on that. Okay, if someone is critiquing your actions, they're not necessarily, you know, crapping on you as a person. And sometimes, again, people misunderstand that. Uh, number 14 is disassociate improvement from failure. So stop assuming that room for improvement means that you're failing, okay? Stop assuming that because you don't feel like you are being talked about as the pinnacle of success, that you are somehow a failure. Again, it's going back to those, those thought distortions we talked about, talking in absolutes. If you're not the best, then you must be the worst, Okay. If you're not part of this crowd, you must be the out crowd. If you're not part of this, you must be that. That's that's absolute thinking. Okay. So stop. So start disassociating uh, the improvement from failure. Okay. So someone says, of course, you could always grow, right? Going back to the criticism part. That is feedback. It is there to inform. 15 is provide regular opportunities for reflection. Stop and reflect. Okay, a person who has a fixed mindset is just going to keep barreling forward no matter what. But a growth mindset person will stop, look at their azimuth, look at their compass, adjust as necessary, and stay on course. That is how they never get off course because they stop and reflect way more frequently than the person who has the fixed mindset. The fixed mindset is just going to say, north, go north, and they just walk north. And they're like, no, must walk north. And they just keep going. And they, they just don't, they don't stop and reflect and say, hey, how can I fix this? Hey, how can I improve? Hey, how am I doing? You don't, you don't self-measure against your goals. Don't self-measure against another person. Self-measure against your actual, the actualized version of yourself. And what that means is like a future version of yourself that you want to be. You need to compare yourself to the 200K version of you, to the Lavelle Millionaire version of you, to the happy and fulfilled version of you, okay? That's the only thing you need to be comparing to. And that's done through ensuring that you offer yourself time to reflect frequently. Reflect on who you are as a leader, who you are as a promoter, who you are as a, as a spouse, as a friend, as a mother, as a father, whatever. Um, highlight the relationship between learning and brain training, okay? The brain is a muscle just like your, your butt, okay? As much as you want a perky booty, you want to be working on your brain just as much, okay? So think of it like doing squats for your brain. You need to be working it out on purpose, okay? Are you using your butt muscle when you're walking up the stairs? Yes, but that's not going to make your butt look like JLo's, okay? Specific training for your butt is what's going to do that. Same with brain training. We're learning all day long. We're humans. Our brains are constantly taking in information. So separate learning from brain training. What are you purposefully and intentionally focusing on to train your brain every single day? So if you have a specific thought distortion that you really struggle with, just because you're on this Zoom, you're learning. But what are you doing every single day to train your brain, okay? Are you doing squats for your brain, okay? And that's how you're gonna have to have to think about it. 18 is cultivate grit, okay? A lot of it comes with having thick skin, not taking things personally, not always assuming that everything is an attack on you and your character, um, always looking at things as feedback to inform you to be better, okay? so having that extra bit of determination will be more, you'll be more likely um, to be more independent and less likely to seek approval from others. Okay. If you've got grit, 
you don't care about the opinions of others because you know that does not define your success. You know that does not implicate anything about the trajectory of where you are going in your journey. So cultivate some grit, okay? Um, number 19 is abandon the image. Naturally smart sounds just about as believable as spontaneous generation, okay? So like nothing can form out of, something can't form out of nothing. You won't achieve the image if you're not ready to work for it, okay? So abandon the image of what you think something is. Stop assuming. Oh, they're 200K because they have a huge network. Oh, they're this because it's just easy for them. Oh, well, they're just naturally smarter. They're naturally more charismatic. People just like them. They came from another MLM. They whatever, blah, 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 right? Abandon the image of what you think should be and swap it out for what you can be, okay? That's, again, you're going to notice that a lot of these things intertwine with the thought distortions we talked about last week when it came to absolutes and it came to that fantasy thinking. Um, Krista went over those last week as well. Um, use the word yet with everything you say. Put the word yet at the end of it. I'm not 4K, so I can't do that yet. You know, oh, I don't know how to do Zoom yet. I don't know how to do X, Y, and Z yet. I'm not good at that yet. I'm not a leader yet. Okay. So learn to put yet at the end of everything. Why? Because it inherently leaves room for improvement and possibility. Okay. 21 is learn from other people's mistakes. If people are coming up to you saying what their mistakes were and how they learned from it, heed the advice. <laughs> don't be, again, going back to the, that uh, curriculum I was talking about, don't be rock brain. Don't be stuck. Don't be thinking like, I got this and I, I'm going to do it my way. You can, but you're going to learn the hard way. It's going to take longer. Okay. Learn from other people's mistakes. It's not wise to compare yourself, but when you see other, if you're walking in a line, right, we're all on this journey together. And if you see someone in front of you trip and fall on their face, it's probably wise to learn from that mistake and walk around the thing they tripped on, right? Like learn from it. Uh, or you're just going to be like lemmings walking off the cliff, all of you together, everybody. Okay. <laughs> Plummeting to death. Like if that's what you want, totally okay, but learn from other people's mistakes. 22 is make a new goal for every goal you accomplish, okay? Because again, growth is an ongoing journey that never stops. You don't reach the pinnacle of growth. So for every goal you accomplish and check off, you make a new one immediately, oh, 12K by March and get my car. Well, guess what? As soon as you get 12K by March and get your car, as soon as that happens, excuse me, you have a new goal. Your new goal is, okay, oh, it's beautiful. Thank you. Your new goal is 40K by this date. Your new goal is something else, okay? So for every goal you accomplish, you set a new one. Two, uh, three more. So number 23 is take risks in the company of others. Why? you are accountable to them. Stop trying to save face all the time and let yourself goof up and make mistakes in front of them. They are going to one, help you learn and help you strategize how to do things differently, okay? They also have an outside observation of why they think you may have messed up or what they think may have gone wrong or what may have influenced that, okay? So take risks in the company of others. Stop trying to do things in secret. One, because you close yourself off to receiving more help, to receiving an outside perspective. And again, it's you want to be liked by other people. And so you're like, I can't mess up because they're not going to like me, right? Not growth mindset. 24, think realistically about time and effort. There's a difference between, you know, being a dreamer and living in a fantasy world. 
understand what you can give for effort, understand what you currently have for skills, understand what you currently can commit for time, make goals accordingly. But again, a growth mindset will always know that there's room to improve. So it's like, I don't know how to do this yet, right? Yet. So what I will do is I will do what I can, but I'm always learning to improve. And as I do that, I will be able to commit more and more and more and more, right? Because you're always growing. Don't expect to master every topic under the sun right away. So if you're new on here and you're listening, you are not going to know everything about VIP. You are not going to be able to explain the products in and out. You are not going to be able to do those things right away. And that is okay. Do not let that stop you from moving forward. And the last one is take ownership of your attitude. A, grow, a person with a growth mindset will always be accountable for their own thoughts and actions and their attitude. They will not blame their circumstances. They will not blame other people. They will not blame their environment. They will not blame anything else. Acknowledge yourself as someone who possesses a growth mentality and be proud to let it guide you throughout your entire being. This is career, but your entire being, okay? Take ownership of it. Yep. I did that because I felt this way, but you know what? I learned from it. It's not failure. I learned and I'm going to train my brain to do something different. And I'm going to walk in that. I'm going to grow. So I'll hand it back to Krista. I'm going to try to find this other, I'm going to try to download it the same way. Um, so I can send it in here, but make sure you download these two worksheets. Okay. So we went over tell yourself a different story and set learning goals instead of performance goals. Um, and you're gonna notice, like she said, even those intertwining with last week, all of this is gonna basically pull together what she was talking about. The next one is capitalize on your failures. So failures teach us things that success can't necessarily teach us. Instead of running away from things, what we need to do is take advantage of those failures. We review them, we see like what happened, was it our own actions that caused us to fail? Was it, you know, just a stumbling block? We need to maybe put in a little more effort. We need to learn how to do things a different way. Um, and then seeing what different, what didn't work and then make a plan to correct those mistakes or to, um, just like she was talking about, we, we have to be learning all the time. Um, just because she's a 200K doesn't mean she's not learning stuff all the time. Just because I'm a 12K doesn't mean I'm not learning stuff all the time about even VIP period or even, the very beginning stages, we have to learn all the time in order to better not only ourselves, but those that come behind us. So once we, we set our mind to look at failures as a means to learn and grow instead of considering them as limitations of your abilities, we are able to capitalize on them. We're not just um, learning just to be learning. We're learning to better ourselves all the time. Um, and we're going to fail. Um, that's just a given. We're going to fail at times. Um, and like she was talking about, we have to also take from other people's failures, not necessarily the mistakes they made, but there's going to be things that they maybe went through or they experienced that they don't want us to fall into those same traps or even make those same mistakes. The fourth one is choose Goldilocks tasks to for, for continuous improvement. This, um, is where we talk about sometimes choosing just little goals. Like she even discussed, we hit one goal, well, then we create another goal. You don't wanna go into this and be like, next month I'm 200K and you just flipped to promoter yesterday. Obviously dream big, but yeah. also goals that are, That's we going. have the 800 first, then 1600, then 4K, then 12K. There's a process, um, activities that aren't too easy, but they're also not too difficult. So a lot of times for me, um, I like to tell people, I'm not shooting for 40K, really I'm shooting for 80K. I don't wanna be like, well, next month I'm gonna be 200K. Is it possible? I mean, sure, it, it could happen, but I don't wanna also just barely shoot for above my goal. I wanna shoot a little bit above my goal. This provides an opportunity to step outside our comfort zone for one, and but it also doesn't lead to anxiety. If I sit here and say, by the end of this um, rank advancement, I'm gonna be 200K, that brings me a lot of anxiety. Like I'm. That's a lot for one person that's just sitting at 12K. But if I say I could reach 80K, that's a little, that's a little more reasonable. And then if I say, well, let's, let's shoot for 40K maybe by 
end of February. And then by the end of rank advancement, I want to be 80K. That's a little more reasonable for me to be thinking. If I sit here and say I'm going to be 200 k that's obviously going to make me really sick. And I'm probably going to just run and jump off a cliff. So set those goals where they're not so easy that you could just hit it just like that. But you don't want them to be so drastic that you just curl up in a ball and, you know, don't ever do anything. Um, it sets us up for continuous improvement by slowly building our current abilities. It, it pushes us, it pushes us to do a little more, it pushes us to learn, it pushes up us to give a little more effort than we're already giving. Number five, this is the last one. Um, this is also gonna kind of lead into those worksheets that she's gonna share. Be consistent and flexible. We can't just shift our minds in a day. Nothing happens in a day's time. It, re it requires a lot of practice and a lot of consistency. So um, the main way to do a lot of these things is to reflect on our past behavior and ask some questions. How did we act last time something happened? Okay, she sent us the worksheets. Did you choose a fixed or a growth mindset? What made you choose that growth or fixed mindset over the other? Why did you choose growth in this situation? Why did you choose fixed? Is there a pattern of events that makes you adopt that fixed mindset? And why did you fail to recognize the fixed mindset in that moment? So a lot of these questions are gonna kind of tie into some of those things that she shared in those worksheets. By asking these questions on a regular basis and being flexible enough to learn from them, we're gonna be able to identify trigger points and develop new strategies for adopting the growth mindset, which is where we wanna be. Obviously not all strategies work for everybody and not every strategy is gonna work the same every single time. That's why you have to be consistent and flexible enough in our approaches to go from the fixed to the growth mindset. Exactly. Um, and like I said, uh, and, and Chris has said, going through these worksheets will really help you. It'll identify some of those thought distortions and it will help you counteract them. And it will help you create those, um, like how uh, Chris said earlier, tell yourself a different story. And this is one of those things that I did a lot with, you know, my patients and clients in not just one-on-one -on -one therapy, but also group therapy was, you know, literally taking somebody's trauma narrative or taking somebody's narrative and we just say, tell yourself a different story. How can you take that exact narrative and tell a different story? Okay. Tell the same story with a different outcome or tell it from a different perspective or talk about something. So it's slightly different. If it's negative, make it positive. You know, how can you tell yourself a different story? So <clears throat> A lot of people get caught up in assuming certain things about a situation. And so they apply that lens and those assumptions to how they perceive the event or how they perceive people or how they believe something went down. But tell yourself a different story instead of saying something like, you know, oh, they did this because they didn't like me. Try telling yourself a different story, okay? And some people may say, oh, well, that's just lying to myself. Well, unless you literally heard someone tell you we're doing this because we don't like you, then you don't know what the narrative is. Again, you're, you're assuming something based on the way you view it, based on your lens, right? This happens a lot in relationships. You assume why your spouse is doing something or saying something, so you begin to react according to that assumption rather than what is probably actually happening. So tell yourself a different story, okay? Instead of saying, you know, oh, your spouse is coming in and they're all huffy puffy and they're slamming dishes around and cupboards around, so I'm saying, oh, they're just being a jerk. How dare, you know, I didn't do anything about, you can say, oh, I wonder if they had, you know, they probably had a bad day at work. They're probably dealing with a lot of other things internally that they haven't talked to me about. They're probably doing blah, 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 blah. Not only does that shift your mindset, but it actually changes the way you think about a situation and more positively frames it. Because guess what? When you think about it that way, you have more impact over that situation as opposed to you just assuming it's negative and unfixable and all of these other things. Flexible thinking allows room for growth. It allows room for change. It allows room for um, the application of just different approaches to problem solving, right? We always talk a lot about big deal or little deal. Most things, the only thing that is a big deal is like life and death, blood, okay? Like trauma. Trauma is the big deal. 
everything else is a little deal. And as long as you understand how to maintain that perspective and you base your reactions and your behaviors and your thoughts accordingly, you will start to gain so much more control over your mindset. It's crazy. Um, Tracy says it changed my life. It does when it comes to parenting, when it comes to your own being, right? Something happens in your team and things just go crazy. And you're like, this is a little deal. It feels like a big deal because you're used to making big deals out of everything. But really, in the grand scheme of things, this is a little deal. A little deal deserves a little reaction. Little reaction, little behavior, little thought, okay? Little adjustments. Most of the time, people think everything is a big deal and has a big reaction, and we needed to change everything. And then you end up like overcorrecting. So I'm from Maine. So when we are driving in snow or on ice, the biggest reason for crashes is people overcorrect when they're sliding on ice. So when people are sliding and they're like, whoa, they tend to want to jerk the other way. And then that makes them just do this like 360. They're just going crazy. It's because they overcorrect. Overcorrecting causes so much more harm than good. Okay. Because again, you're, if you, you're like a pendulum that's constantly swinging to all good or all bad, change everything or change nothing, right? Going back to those absolutes. So stop overcorrecting. You will stop overcorrecting when you genuinely begin to understand the difference between big deal and little deal, okay? If you start to implement this, like Trace said, it'll actually change your life. When it comes to being a parent, little deal, little deal, okay? Um, and train yourself that train yourself to think about those things too. Everything is a little deal unless someone is actually dying or there is blood gushing everywhere, or it's a natural disaster. It's a little deal. Okay. So you do not give it any more attention than a little deal deserves. Um, this will be up on our YouTube channel, probably in a couple of minutes. Usually I can access it within a couple of minutes and then upload it. Um, <clears throat> thank you guys so much for, I know this is a little bit longer, but we definitely wanted to kind of wrap up what mindset is, what we're going to be doing, because we're really setting the stage for, uh, February, where we are going to definitely be diving in more in depth to how to work on these things and how to fix your mindset, how to go from a fix to a growth, how to do these things. So if you've never been to therapy, welcome. You're about to go. Um, <laughs> So these are basically everything that I did with all of my patients and IOP. So um, it's life-changing. I think even teaching these classes helped me and my perspective and how I am as a mom and as a spouse and, and as a leader. So Krista, do you have anything else you want to add before we close out? No? All good. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for making time to be on. Like I said, if you can't open um, the attachments in here, I sent them in the Thrive Army chat where you should be able to open them there, whether you're on a phone or not. Um, and then you can go ahead and complete those because we'll probably start working on those together next week, as well as kind of springboarding from that to learn about some actual interventions and strategies that you can put in place. So we love you guys. Thank you so much for getting on and don't forget bootcamp is, uh, at seven 30. So we'll see you guys there. Bye.